Hi everyone. So recently in my group coaching sessions, a common question kept popping up and that is cortisol and exercise. You guys probably already know that I recommend very intense exercise for those of you who can do that as a form to bridge that dopamine gap and restore the dopamine levels that you lost due to food addiction or due to so many reasons that over time destroyed the amount of dopamine that you had and now you're going through life in that anhedonia state of life where it's hard for you to get motivated you're depressed you have anxiety all of the things that are associated with low dopamine states so i do recommend intense cardio that progressively gets more intense to regenerate the dopamine and the d2 receptor levels as quickly as possible and no you don't have to do it forever i filmed a video explaining how that works it's called a, the brain rehab program that i recommend i will make sure that i link it in the description box below so you can check that out but a common objection is that well won't that stress us out won't that increase cortisol and then mess our hormones and the answer is no because dopamine by definition is known as the anti-stress molecule like that's a name that we use to refer to dopamine so when you have dopamine you're in a low stress state and vice versa you they never go together it's either you are in a high dopamine low stress state or vice versa high cortisol low dopamine state and so what i'm doing and what i'm recommending is that you raise your dopamine and lower cortisol through the brain rehab program that's going to increase baseline levels of dopamine so it's not just about pumping out dopamine it's more importantly you want to raise dopamine receptors so that the dopamine can attach to its receptors so that you actually feel high on life it's like taking basically an adderall pill without the crash that's what we're supposed to feel like every day so if you want to handle stress better you have to train you have to raise your dopamine that is how you become resilient in the face of any stressor and how much stress are you going to be resilient against you decide by how much you train you can train your brain to have x amount of dopamine baseline dopamine levels or you can train it to have a higher amount you decide by choosing the intensity of your training more intense training more time under tension that means more dopamine that means more resilience against higher and higher stressors so if you have an especially stressful life it is even more important for you to train even harder and i want to also mention that dopamine is the precursor to adrenaline right and so this is one of the mechanisms through which stress actually wipes out dopamine because when you're stressed out you're pumping out adrenaline but that means you're using up your dopamine because you're taking all that dopamine converting it to adrenaline because you need it because you're stressed out so stress uses up dopamine because of that pathway and if you have a lot of stresses in your life then you want to raise your overall uh, pool of dopamine so that no matter how much dopamine is being transferred into or converted into adrenaline doesn't matter you still have plenty enough for you to feel good and amazing also another way that stress lowers dopamine is that dopamine transporters have been shown to decrease in chronic stress so the transporters for dopamine in your brain drop and i've linked the studies that show those mechanisms if you want to nerd out a little bit with the science so you can see how um, it just blows my mind when people think that you're actually stressing yourself by training <laughs> it's like the complete opposite I hope this is helpful. If you want more information just like this, and if you want to ask me even more personalized questions, um, or you want that support um, for weight loss, for sticking to your diet, for mindset, all that kind of stuff, inspiration, join our group meetings. I'm doing support meetings on Sundays at 9 a.m. Eastern and on Thursdays at 2 p.m. Eastern. It's $49 if you want to join just one weekly session. Um, so per $49 per month and you get one weekly session. So that comes out to four or five sessions all in all, because depending some months are four sessions, some months are five sessions, depending on the length of the month. And um, it is $99 if you want to join two sessions, if you want both weekly sessions. So you end up having under your belt 
anywhere between eight to 10 sessions per month. You also get access to all of the previous recordings of all of the Zoom meetings that we've done, which has an insane amount of information. I hope this was helpful. If you enjoy this type of content, make sure you give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little notification bell icon so YouTube alerts you every time I post a new video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.